So when did rallying truly begin? The 60s? The 50s? Well, actually, the answer is rather ambiguous. However, many have come to agree that the first true rallying event was that of the 1894 Paris to Rouen horseless carriage competition. The event was won by Albert Lemaitre driving a three horsepower Peugeot. The race had become quite popular and this style of city to city races across France and other parts of Europe slowly gained traction and over the next few years led to multiple city to city races. The likes of the Paris to Bordeaux rally of 1895 and the Bordeaux to Argon and back race in the same year showed the public what motorsport could be, exciting. Iconic features of modern day rally found their origins this early too, the likes of cars racing individually against the clock, timed entry and exit points, the use of different surfaces and even a form of pace notes were all coined at this point. However, very quickly problems began to arise. The aforementioned Paris to Bordeaux rally with a distance of 732 miles was won with a time of 48 hours and 48 minutes or an average speed of just 15 miles per hour. Contrast this with the Paris to Madrid rally of 1903. The 340 mile race was won with a time of 5 hours and 15 minutes or an average speed of over 65 miles per hour cars were evolving fast, and due to the loose surfaces in many places and the unprotected spectators and livestock that could potentially wander onto the course led to the event being cancelled after multiple crashes were recorded. Eight deaths came as a result. This form of event therefore was banned. It's quite easy to draw comparisons between this and the termination of Group B in the mid 1980s, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But instead of closing the event permanently, the rules were instead changed. Events now had to be held on closed highways or purpose-built tracks instead of open public roads like they had been previous to 1903. Contrary to all this however, many have come to agree that the first true rally was the Monte Carlo Rally of 1911 due to it being the first event to use the title Rally. It wasn't what you'd expect out of a traditional rallying event however. It worked as such. Drivers would start out from different locations around Europe and would then drive for hundreds of miles and each route would make their way to the finish in Monte Carlo. A man by the name of Henri Rougier won the event in his Turcat Marie, a brand new car from the French manufacturer with just 25 horsepower. But judging of this event was a little odd. Rather than being based on, you know, who came first, it was instead judged upon things like vehicle comfort and elegance, which was judged by an observer sitting beside the driver. Still, it gained adequate attention and was an overall success. With the first rally inaugurated, it was only going to go upwards from here. Around this time also saw the birth of a variation of rally called Rally Raid, a long distance completely off-road race that takes place over several days. The 1907 Peking, or Beijing as it's known today, to Paris race was the first of its kind, with the New York to Paris race taking place the following year. Then World War I happened. Because the majority of rallies took place in Europe, it inevitably led to a sheer drop off in rallying popularity, but coming out of the other end, the sport continued to climb. Monte Carlo returned in 1924 and apart from World War II has since been an annual event for almost 100 years. More rallies that are still around today began to pop up too, such as the Alpine Rally, the Mil Miglia and the British RAC Rally. Then 1939 once again saw a large drop off in motorsport with the outbreak of the Second World War. After the war was concluded, rally sport had a slow rebirth, but by the 1950s it had become once again incredibly popular. Even more popular rallies saw their birth here, the Swedish Rally, Rally Finland and the Acropolis Rally were just some of them. 1953 also saw the introduction of the European Rally Championship and for a while it was the most important championship on the calendar. 
until the introduction of the World Rally Championship in the 1970s. Speaking of the world, the sport had slowly grown to other parts of the globe outside of Europe. The Americas especially saw an influx of new spectators and interest for the sport. The likes of the Carrera Pan America spanned across Mexico and would last for days. And of course, there were the cars. While they weren't as ingrained into the public image of the sport at the time compared to the succeeding years, there were some notable standouts contenders, with the likes of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, the Mercedes-Benz 220, the Jaguar XK120 and the Jaguar Mark 7 pioneering the idea of what rally cars have become today. Of course, at that point, safety and tailored construction methods weren't really a thing and so crashes and rolls were far more common. An extreme example is that of Eric Carlsson, a Swedish rally driver who became famous for rolling his underpowered Saabs onto their roofs during races. Coincidentally, Carlsen is perceived as the true first rallying superstar. But as the 50s came to an end, the rules of rallying once again began to shift. Up until this point, cars were near to or completely stock. This meant that anyone with access to a remotely sporty car could easily compete, and there could be hundreds of entries into one event. However, the governing bodies of the rallies decided that change was necessary. Cars were now to become quote-unquote homologation specials. The cars were allowed to have modifications, be that with engine power, weight or expenses elsewhere. This change caught the eyes of not only individuals as public interest began to climb once again, but manufacturers too. The landscape was about to change.